Hey everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. It is a beautiful sunny day out today and I have been working on my solar panel set. Melanie had the camera and I'm sorry that I didn't have the ability to record but she was using it. Uh, this camera, the one that I've been using. Anyway, here I have the camera. What I've done so far is simply put on the charge controller, the Renogy, and the meter that came from the electronics lab. So I disconnected it from the electronics shop, brought it in here, and put it on the wall. Now, I have this stud sensor, Zircon, edge finding stud sensor with electrical wire warning, that I'm trying to figure out. I sort of figured out that here's a stud right there, and there's one right there, but down in here is a confusing mess. So. Um, I've never used a stud fi finder before in the first place and although this wasn't cheap, it was the only one they had at Ace Hardware, it's confusing. So anyway down here it's either a lot of boards and stuff or it's just weird, I don't know. But anyway up here I was able to pretty much get that into a stud there along that line and I'm trying to locate the position to put the hole through the wall for the wires which will go to the solar panels and then wires will go into the battery box so working on that right now this is almost centered on the battery box so it's pretty close to where I want it for the charge controller output to go into the batteries so somewhere right around here is where I'll make my hole and then go on through outside so anyway my next step is to find where I'm going to put the hole and I've pretty much got an idea that there's nothing here. So I'll take the stud finder, go on a blank spot, it sets itself, and then I come over. It looks like there's a, looks like something there. Nothing here. There is, it says there's something here. Well, there's just a blip. It's weird. So that's uh, electrical warning, I think, maybe. Nope, no, it's just mad. So anyway. I'm not going to waste your time while I try to figure this out, but looks like there's something here. And over here there's nothing. So, well, there's something. So it looks like I have a small spot right here where I can put a hole. And right about there, I guess, is where I'm going to do it. I'm going to mark it off with tape, and then I'm going to take a long screw and screw through and see if I hit open air behind the drywall. So that's the next step. Okay, I chose to go right here to the left of the controller, and I hit, certainly hit air, right here. Definitely hit air right there. So I'm going to go and put a perimeter around where the hole is going to be with the screw and make sure I don't hit anything. nothing there. Oops. Uh, yeah, I hit air. It doesn't even ratchet in. There's nothing behind there at all. Nothing but air. Just to make sure that I don't hit anything back there, I'll use the screw like that. Just air. Okay, so I found a spot where I'm going to go through. Now I'm going to get my hole cutter and put the hole through here. And then cut a hole into the battery box on the outside so I can pass the wires through the wall of the house into the battery box. Getting the right hole cutter. It fits the PVC pipe conduit that I'm going to use. My good old faithful hole cutter. And then I've got some extensions to get it through the wall as I get deeper in, which I might as well put on under my drill. Okay, and then put that in there. 
doesn't go very deep. I don't like how shallow that is. But there's my hole driller. And we're going to go ahead and put a hole through the wall now to fit this pipe. And hope I don't hit anything. If my stud finder was working and if my screw test was good, I won't hit any electrical lines in here. That's the hopes. And hopefully I'm at the right height too that uh, I'll be right in that battery box on the other side of the wall at the right height to go into the battery box. Now I'm going to have to take out the stuff as I go. I'm going to get the garbage can over here. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the hole through the wall and the conduit fits all the way through and then I hit the battery box outside of course you can hear it hitting the metal so now I've got to cut through the metal of the battery box on the other side and then uh, I'm going to have to put another hole later for the um, inverter wires to come through the AC electricity and the DC 12 volt to come through later but that'll be another step Hey guys, I use the Tech Life rotary tool with a cutoff wheel. Amazing cutoff wheels, I have to say. And put a hole through here. Now, this is a little bit low. My hole is a tiny, tiny bit low. But there's going to be a second conduit above that for the uh, AC wires, uh, the power wires going in. So two of the wires are only going through between the, the house and the battery box out to the solar panels and coming in. And then the other two wires are coming out into the battery box, the charging wires. So I just got to tap that metal down a tiny bit further with a hammer. I had to get in here with a hammer. Flatten that down flush with the board, the 2x4 frame down there. And then I think I'll be pretty much set here. I don't think I need to extend that cutout any further. Maybe I'll widen it a tiny bit. But there it is. Now here I, I went and uh, made the investment and I bought wire, I bought a lot of wire. I've got 65 feet of black and 65 feet of red. Now don't forget this is an MPPT charge controller so I can combine the solar panels together in series to increase the voltage and reduce loss in the wires. So these are 10 gauge wires, it was the biggest I could get in town. So uh, that's what I've got and that's what I'm using. If I can ever find bigger, maybe one day I might change that. But for now, this is what I've got. And I've got high voltage going to go through these. So it should be okay. Strung the wires out all the way out to the solar panels. Way over there. And up inside behind the battery box and into the house. And uh, it looks like my opening here is fine. And the conduit fits just, just right in here. So there's not going to be any metal edges on the wire. Let's go inside. And in here, I've run the wires through and put in the plus and minus of the solar panel connectors. So nothing's connected outside yet. I just ran the wires in and put in plus and minus to the solar panel connections. Now I'm going to make the battery connections, okay? And then outside I can hook up the solar panels after that's done. And then I'll pretty this up. I'm probably going to wrap that with zip ties and uh, Put it into the conduit and then I'll spray foam or something here and maybe put some kind of a nice cover plate or something here. This can go, all my tape pieces, and I think it's going to look okay. I have to reroute the uh, network cable, but I have it up there for now because the cats eat anything exposed, any exposed wires they love to eat, which is why I've got to cover them. Hey guys, I borrowed this from a friend. It's a tool I've always wanted and my friend has one, so here it is, and I'm going to crimp on a end connector here onto this wire. Put that in here and hammer it down.
Oh, very nice. Very, very good connection. I like it. The real deal there. Look at that connection. That's not coming out. All right, guys, I'm gonna run this inside through the conduit and then hook it up to the charge controller and then make sure that it fits in here after that. Should be good. I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, it's gonna fit, I can tell now. So that'll go inside and this will go over here. So I've got the positive on this end of the battery bank and the negative will charge on this end. And then drawing off power will be opposite. So we'll take you inside real quick and hook that up and then I'll come back out here and hook up this screw and we'll have power to the charge controller. Okay guys, so I just kicked the camera. It's closer than I thought to me. So I ran the positive in there and put, plugged it into the battery bank and the two solar panel wires which are not connected to anything yet. And then I'm going to connect the negative wire to the battery bank, the negative wire to the charge controller and then to the battery bank. And then we should have power inside our tiny house to the charge controller. And then I can hook up the solar panels and we'll be charging our batteries outside. And then tomorrow's project will be to get power inside the tiny house from this set of panels. Now, don't forget, the other two panels are already hooked up at this time anyway through a different system, but this is going to be the professional setup here. All right, let's connect the negative wire inside here. Oh, yeah, I measured right. That'll be fine. I want to put grease on this later. Dialectic grease. Make sure everything's protected well. Wait, yeah, there's power in that. Scared me. The charge controller has some capacitors in there. And I'm going to tighten that wing nut. inside real quick and we should have power definitely looks like we got power on the charge controller hey okay, look at that guys we've got power and obviously I've got no power coming in I don't know oh yeah it says 12.3 volts but I'm not sure I, I don't know if there's a separate uh, battery sense wire because this always showed me a lower voltage so I've got to double check on that Oh yes guys, we have charge going on. Look at that. It's not a whopping amount of power. I don't know how to get the light on this. Oh, there it is. 12.4 volts on the battery. I don't know if this is an awkward screen to see. 0.7 amps. I'm gonna have to learn how to use this. Uh, SOC, I have no idea what I'm looking at. We'll have to learn how this works, okay guys? But there it is. There it is. Oh, there's a PV, there's a solar panel uh, voltage, 46 volts, 12.4. So there's a half an amp coming in. I'll have to figure out what is that? A uh, half an amp um, times 12, six watts. A whopping six watts coming in, guys. We have power. We have it. That is a nice sight. Power, solar power in the tiny house. Actually wired up. Now I'm going to put a fuse on there, so don't panic. I am going to put a fuse on there, but I wanted to get this wired for today and make sure it works. And then we're going to straighten it up and pretty it up tomorrow. Hey guys, one more step to energy independence. Pulling out the old electric stove and going to hook up propane. The house has propane anyway, so it's not a big deal to just slide that stove out and slide the propane stove in. And uh, that's going to cost us a whole lot less each month. Well guys, one more thing happened today. The truck fell in half. Actually no, some friends came over and we tore it apart. Um, there's something that had to be done anyway. We ripped this apart and we're trying to figure out what's wrong. And there's no, ga and there's no power to the uh, fuel pump, so we've got to figure that out.
Y and fix it. But I'm very impressed with the cleanliness of the frame in this truck. There's no rust. There's no rust anywhere in this truck. I'm very impressed. So that's uh that's nice. <sighs> anyway, tomorrow I'll have a look at that. And see what's going on here and see if we can figure this out. I'm wondering if I should just find out which power pin or which pins are the power and just run power to it with a toggle switch. Be done with it. Yeah, we'll see if I can figure it out the right way. But there's that. Another day is done. And I'm exhausted. It's cold. I don't know how the people that work outside in the cold all the time do it. Because I work outside in the cold and I'm tired. Alright guys. Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Good night.